it's time. Two months have passed since the last time, and now let me show you what the Phoenix team has been up to. Since the 9th of June, we released a new Phoenix version, Phoenix 5.01. It's a hotfix that adds official support for v 6 for Max and Maya. And at download.chaos.com, as always, you can find separate installers for the different v versions, for v Next, v 5, and now for v 6. So, uh, you have to make sure to install the correct one. And if you were using Phoenix and if you've upgraded V-Ray from an older version to V-Ray 6, you have to make sure to also download Phoenix for V-Ray 6. Otherwise, if you uh, are left with an older install of, for example, Phoenix for V-Ray 5 and you upgrade to V-Ray 6, you are probably gonna crash. The v 6 SDK is frozen and this means that there is no more the need to install Phoenix and v from the same day to make sure that they are working together. The SDK is frozen, it doesn't change anymore, so now all of this uh, is over and everything is back to normal. No more zip builds for Maya. Okay, let me do this again. Uh, we have to have a better simulation than this. So, we dropped the zip builds for Maya. Yeah, so now there is an unpack install option in the Chaos Installer and it just allows you to extract all the files from the installer and it's basically the same thing as the zip builds. And here is a guide on how to install Phoenix this way. There is a special offer for everyone with perpetual Phoenix licenses. It's to get a three year term Phoenix license at the price that an upgrade would have cost without losing the perpetual license, and the offer is at mychaos.com slash products. What's everyone in the team been up to? Uh, this guy has been working on the standalone simulator, and now it has foam, splash, and mist particle simulation, also standalone re-simulation, and standalone time band re-simulation for fire and smoke, so you can slow down, speed up, and create bullet time effects with your fire and smoke simulations. And this means that now uh, all of the major options of the simulator are available and I just have to add the remaining 5000 Phoenix nodes. The voxel shader is now faster. These are the three cases that I managed to speed it up. Grid RGB used for small color and uh, uh, when the volume white cache of Phoenix was enabled and when the uh, fully visible fire mode is used. So this is an old scene that I made in 2014. It uses all of these three and this makes it 30% faster. I've also been adding support for the deformer modifiers of 3ds Max in volumetric mode because in mesh mode, the modifiers, they work just by default, but in volumetric mode, we have to take special care. Otherwise, nothing renders. Uh, for now, the bend, skew, taper, twist, melt and stretch modifiers are supported. Uh, both over the simulators and for the particle shaders as well, and they would be coming to the volume grid as well. So for now, many things are not supported. Uh, they are in very early development stage, but they are in the 90s, so if you need them, you can try them out. How do they look? On the left, here is a pretty sick Phoenix explosion, and on the right, uh, here is a sick and twisted Phoenix explosion. And here is a twisted waterfall preset. So it has all the foam and the splashes and the mist and for the particle shader a liquid simulator has to be connected right here because the modifiers are applied on top of it. Uh, the simulator is where the data is and the particle shader just shades it. So ocean meshing has been needing a lot of love and I've added out of memory handling, also equalized the edges of the cap mesh with the way that the ocean mesh looked. So here is how the cap mesh worked before and how it works now. Also, I did this for the ocean uh, mesh mode and I also added a border fade percentage option, which allows the real simulated waves inside of the container to blend better with the displaced waves outside. So you can create tall waves, stormy sea setups and blend them seamlessly with an infinite ocean in Phoenix now. I also added colored absorption to the particle shader in fog mode. We already had this for the voxel shader and here is how it looks. 
So it allows you to tint uh, in a certain way the uh, color of, uh, in this case, the mist particles, which are rendered as fog, and it makes the uh, render more interesting. Also, I raised the grid-based motion blur from the dead. So it was even the default in Phoenix 3, uh, then some problems uh, started appearing, and then the ray trace was back as the default method for motion blur. And now both of them are available in the user interface. Uh, all the known issues with the grid based motion blur are now fixed. What's the difference? That uh, the grid based is uh, running at a render prepass and it uses more memory. And how how they work in practice. So here you can see that the ray trace motion blur is much grainier, uh, even at high speed, and the grid-based motion blur allows for uh, smoothing the fluid much better. And here is an explosion where you can see that the ray trace motion blur completely loses all the uh, velocities at the periphery, while the grid-based motion blur uh, creates for uh, creates a very interesting effect. This is a explosion two-bar preset at a very early frame, actually. Also, V-Ray IPR CPU in 3ds Max for simulators was not working for years, and finally I made it work. So uh, it was working in Maya, it was working for particle shaders, it was even working with V-Ray GPU only IPR CPU for simulators, and now it's finally available and soon it's going to be in the very 90s for the volume grids. And if you want to get faster feedback, for example, in this scene, I've disabled the volume white cache of Phoenix and dropped the probabilistic samples to one. And here is a simulator, which I've cloned and then instanced. And then I've also used Vira Instancer to instance more simulator copies. Uh, Kao has been adding two tips to the active body solver, the thinking particles operators, he did some fixes to the active body center of mass and to the original animation influence, which uh, when set to one uh, was not following the original animation quite well. Also, the cache converter now has drag and drop of caches over the executable file and you can see how it works right here. So I have an aura cache. It works like this. It's just the two bar Warsmog preset. And if I drop it over the exe, here it is. How it works. So by default, our files get converted to VDBs, VDBs get converted to our files. So you don't have to use the command line mode at all and it's easy. Also, Kawa replaced the thinking particles operators diagrams uh, with the more modern ones of Phoenix. And here is how that works. So here are the new diagrams. This is the, uh, the birth operator. And these curves, they just, uh, they represent where more particles would be born depending on the temperature or depending on the smoke or other factors. Tetsi has been doing fixes in the previews in Maya and in the Phoenix Previewer and also in the Resimulation user interface. And he did a large change to the NUMA multi-trading of Phoenix. So uh, many of the Phoenix algorithms were not using all the NUMA nodes, they were using just the first ones, and these are the algorithms, the pre-processing of uh, volumes and the particles, uh, most of the Phoenix previews, and saving and loading of OR and VDB cache files. And also he created a new Phoenix standalone top target in CMake, so now it's easier for us to iterate and build just the Phoenix standalone and the standalone previewer and the cache converter. And he's working on speeding up the build times so that we can be more productive. Vladi is a new colleague. So he started in the Phoenix team uh, two months ago. And the first thing that he added was a get support menu item for Max and Maya so that whenever you have any issues with Phoenix, you can just click this and uh, report uh, any any bugs or crashes or uh, ask any questions to our chaos support. And uh, he's been working on the uh, Phoenix Patho node to support multi-splines uh, multi in uh, 3ds Max and also for multiple curves in Maya. So in Maya there is a set, so far only the first one was used and now all of them are used by the Patho force. And he did also a couple of bug fixes as well. And now Vadi is working on the force streamline preview. So now uh, the force preview is made up of the old vectors and uh, it's not 
uh, really easy to understand, so now we are going to have a streamlined preview for the forces. Kalinsky has been adding uh, render elements support in volumetric mode to V-Ray 6, so we want to get rid forever of the dreaded volumetric geometry mode, which renders slower and doesn't support all options, so the crypto mat and multi-mat elements are already there and he did some fixes to them and he also added support for velocity and normals. And other uh, very important thing was multiple scattering with control for the phase function for the voxel shader simulators and the Voron grid. Now this uh, is able to work with all of the uh, V-Ray versions, even with other V-Rays, but unfortunately for now it's CPU only. And here is how it works. So here is the old uh, Phoenix render with phase function of zero, uh, which just scatters the light in all directions equally. And there is a, a render with a positive phase function, which means forward scattering, which is great for clouds. So, uh, or for just for volumes that are made up of water droplets. And uh, now we can create much more realistic clouds than what we were able to do before. And also uh, a negative phase function means backscattering. And this is when you render volumes made up of hard particles, such as dust. Jorkata. Uh, we recorded a 501 what's new video and uh, hopefully we would be able to have such video for uh, each uh, next Phoenix release and in these videos there are long videos and we are just going over all of the new stuff and telling everything that we know about it and showing how it works in practice. So in this case here is Multimat for the particle shader. Also importing Phoenix VDBs into Unreal and uh, here is a video that he recorded, and this is a Phoenix explosion in Unreal, which is pretty cool. And also he did an interview for the Chaos Campus Live show, and here is a link to, link to that, and uh, you have to make sure to uh, join the uh, Chaos Campus Facebook group, it's pretty awesome. Suavi verified and updated many of our tutorials, which got outdated over the years, so now uh, we know that um, our tutorials are, are more up-to-date, and updated also many docs pages, added all of the new information uh, about all the new stuff in Phoenix, and updated videos, and also uh, here are the time-lapse clouds uh, from the Phoenix toolbar, which now also have the new face function. Also, uh, she uh, was released testing Phoenix 5.01 uh, and added uh, new information uh, to uh, many of the pages. These two are more interesting. They are the very feature support and the very render element support. These are some big tables that show uh, uh, the compatibility between Phoenix and different very versions. And now we are close to having the full collection of features. Corey managed to finish the, finish the Phoenix Basics Part 2 video, and it's live, and here is how it works. So, again, as in Part 1, uh, there is detailed explanation with a lot of viewport previews, a lot of renders uh, about the different settings and what's going on under the hood, and here is some smoke which uh, doesn't rise or rises up or falls down, depending on the temperature. Also, uh, he transferred a lot of the information from the Phoenix Basics videos to the doc site so that our docs are easier to uh, follow and understand. And also he updated the underwater explosion example scene from Tashko. And here is how the old and the new versions look. And he is now working on updating the images uh, showcasing the covert absorption that I talked about earlier. So here is how it works for smoke and it allows for a lot of variation and a lot of crazy shading and uh, we're going to have examples for this on the dock site as well. Hammer uh, finally managed to publish his uh, Stormy Sea tutorial. It was a long time in the making but it's uh, showing some awesome stuff. It features the uh, wave force and this poor little fishing boat as an active body. And uh, here is how it works in action. Okay, and Hammer has also published a, an article on the Phoenix blog. Uh, it's how to make a nuclear explosion condensation rings, and it looks pretty awesome. It also has uh, 
cloudscape made of Phoenix clouds. And I'm going to finish with a real quote by the real Shakespeare, which says, all the world is but a scene and all the men and women are merely meshes. Well, in fact, some of us are voxels and particles, but with a good measure, we can walk just like regular people. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.